reductionist, limiting ideas of what motherhood is. And I, I wonder if that's, if, if you guys think this is a, um, a particular shift, like did we have different cultish notions of what motherhood was a hundred years ago or was it more, you know, a, a more natural state, a less artificial, least sort of way of being, what do you think? I'm Dani Shirait from Jakarta. I just published my book titled Green Card. This is a novel based on true story about the Indonesian who's struggling uh, to get a green card in the United States. And more interestingly, uh, you have had first-hand experience, right? I mean, as in being in touch with those people who were struggling. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So. In, in 2000 until 2004, I was the, the correspondent of the Indonesian news agency Antara in United Nations headquarters at the time. And uh, uh, for uh, about four years being in United States, especially in New York City, I was not only uh, seeing a college for working related to my work, but also I met so many Indonesian in, in, in the United States. So basically this uh, story in this book is about what I heard, what I felt and what I saw about Indonesian in the United States. I would like to tell uh, all of us here as an Indonesian that there are some Indonesian who are struggling very hard to improve their life. They go to United States that's very, very far away from our home country. Um, uh, I think this book is uh, uh, my appreciation to all Indonesians who already proved themselves as, uh, as uh, a good uh, people who try very hard in, in, in another country. And also the other message that I would like to deliver in, in my book is I would like to remind the government, our government, Indonesian government, that uh, seeing so many Indonesians working very hard to improve themselves, by themselves, why the government don't try to open the door for Indonesians who want to go to abroad and working in the other countries? Shouting contestations, we protest harder and harder and harder till we finally come to a compromise. I know there's stories and excuses, ways that you will hold yourself to those layers you keep placing because like a block of ice that's melting, you feel the annihilation of your form. I pray to any random Apsara or angel that might have been passing by to my dead guinea pig. No more photoshopping my face into your selfies. It's gotta stop. No more cropping out these other jerks from our pics that can't be healthy. I don't mean to cause friction, and I'm sorry it's come to this. These are my hands. It was them that carved the sun. So don't cry for me, mother, when the end of this world comes. When Orion collides with Earth and everything we loved is gone, remember I am not wreckage. I was the bomb. <laughs> My heart, body, and soul, plus a spiritual dimension written through a pen. Forgive me for my sins, I'm flawed. Pieces of my gems, collect these pieces, y'all. This is my thesis written for the broken hearts. See, I hate calling, so I'm free falling in hopes I will grow wings and blossom. You see, race, class, status, and ethnicity should never define our individuality because the human heart is the true identity of humanity. That Chinese people and hippies are actually very similar. We all eat tofu and do tai chi. <laughs> We all believe in our Eastern philosophy, we just use our incense sticks differently. <laughs> Hippies burn it because someone said it would bring tranquility. Chinese people burn it because someone said it would make our dead ancestors happy. It's the same thing, really. 
All mannerism aside, the truth comes alive. Raw without shame and full of pride. The highest of climbs, the deepest of dives. Searching for the place where life is alive. Okay, um, my name is Tash, Tash Ao. Uh, I'm from Malaysia. I live uh, mainly in London, but also in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Um, I'm here for the Ubud Writers' Festival. I'm the author of three novels, um, which you heard about earlier. Um, the first one's called The Harmony Silk Factory. The second, Map of the Invisible World, which is set in Indonesia in the 1960s. And the latest one is uh, Five Star Billionaire, which is set in contemporary Shanghai and Malaysia. Mm, so, I will start with your most recent book. Uh, how would you describe your most recent book in a few sentences? It's basically about a, um, a group of um, Malaysians who go to Shanghai in search of fame and fortune. Um, they're looking for money, a new job, great handbags um, and they're also looking for love of course. I decided to write the novel because I noticed that there were a lot of um, Malaysians leaving Malaysia to seek a better life elsewhere and you know 20 years ago they used to, to go to, to America or to, to Europe but a lot of them are now going to China so I went to China myself and saw that um, there were so many people from overseas there and so many of them were doing you know, really weird and wonderful and exciting things so I decided to write a novel about that. Um, the biggest challenge I guess was was trying to um, or trying to get inside the head of a young woman in China today and, and what it means to be a young woman in China today. The pressures that women are under, the pressures to look beautiful, to look glamorous and feminine, ultra feminine and sexy, um, and to project a message uh, of themselves. Because I, I saw that that was what young women were trying to do everywhere. And and for me, obviously, I you know, I'm not a woman, so I had to try and relate to that in, 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 in a very kind of, in a way that took that position seriously. I think it's difficult for, for women everywhere in the world, but particularly in China, where where there is so much um, pressure to look a certain way, to dress a certain way, um, uh, and so much depends on men. And ironically, those kind of impossible standards do not apply to men? Yes, absolutely. You're absolutely right. Those same standards do not apply to men. Um, they apply to women, but not to men. Saya sudah 8 tahun di dunia dokumenter Indonesia yang saya capture uh, dalam film-film saya kebanyakan uh, daily life juga ada peristiwa-peristiwa besar yang merupakan himpunan-himpunan dari peristiwa keseharian yang muncul. Tapi sampai pada muncul peristiwa-peristiwa yang menjadi puncak uh, misalkan terjadi konflik barulah kita merasakan bahwa Ternyata perubahan sudah terjadi. You're all connected. And it was relating it to, you know, stuff that was like really practical in our lives. He's like, you know, basically we've been the sole controller of our lives. There's no mystical force out there in the sky that's got puppet strings on us all directing things. You know, there's no some being that's in the in the earth that's like making you have bad experiences and other life. All that stuff is within you. That's what he was saying. And then what really clicked in my mind is when he said to this person, he was just like, you are God. 
And I never heard that in my life. Oh, my God.